You know when you go to the store one day, you, you, you hold off on buying the item, and the next day you come back, and now it's more expensive? Oh! Well, you've experienced inflation, and those are percentage increases. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at those kind of increases, and we're going to look at decreases, the opposite of inflation, which is deflation, i.e. sales discounts. So we're going to look at that a little bit here. Here we have a before price of $120 and the after price became $135. And the question is, what is the percent increase to the nearest whole percent? To the nearest whole. So this is rounding here. This is talking about rounding and this is talking about a percent increase. And people get scared when they see percent increase. I'm telling you what, I'm going to hide the percent sign for now. I'm just going to say, what is the increase? Do that. What would you do first? Wouldn't you minus these two? and you get $15. So the increase is $15 increase. I'll write an up arrow. So we just did $135 and we subtracted $120. Not that complicated. And then we got this answer here, $15 increase. I'm gonna erase this because it's not necessary to write, but know that it was going on. Now I'm gonna put that percent sign back. All we did was we found increase. It increased by $15. But how do we turn that 15 into a percent now? How do you turn your exam scores into percents? Don't you have to divide two numbers? Don't you have to take a top number and a bottom number? And usually the bottom number is the total. And the top number is your score. In other words, how many did you get correct? Well, all we're going to do here is we're going to keep the total here. But we're going to remove the score. And instead of score, we're going to write the increase how much it increased divided by the total. So it's the same idea. We're going to divide them and then we're going to turn that answer to a percent. And I'll show you how to do that if you're not sure how. I want you to now look at these two numbers. We have two totals. We can use this one or this one. Actually, one of them can be used. The other one cannot be used. You always go to the original one before the change happened. This is our original. Okay, this is the after, but this is the original. So we will put this as our denominator, and we will put the change, the $15, as our numerator. And we're going to divide those on the calculator. We'll just go 15 divided by 120. We get our answer of decimal 125. Zero decimal 125. That's a decimal. We need to convert it now into a percent. Remember how to do that? You just times by 100. You're going to move the decimal two times. So it becomes 12.5%. Okay, now we have to look at the question again and say to the nearest whole percent. So we have to round it now to the nearest whole number, which is the one spot. And this becomes what? That's a 5. So what happens to the 2? becomes a 3. We get 13%. Increase. Here we have a situation where the opposite is happening. We have a price, it's getting slashed and becoming into something cheaper. And now it's, what is the percent increase? Hey, let's scratch this out. It's not increasing, it's decreasing. So what is the percent decrease? Let's cover up the percent sign. Let's take this. We are going to cover it up. Now it says, what is the decrease? How much did it decrease by? Okay, let's do some subtraction. Big number minus small number. 1285 minus 1156. I won't put the dollar signs in, but you should. Otherwise, I dock marks. 1285, haha, I can get away with it. 1156. Oop, that too many. Too many. Let's do it again. We're going to go 1285 and we're going to subtract 1156. We get 129. $129. That's how much the price fell down. It decreased $129. So this decrease is $129. $129. Now we have to turn it into what? Aha, a percent. How do we turn it into a percent? Well, we're going to take our decrease, just like we do on exams. We take our score and we divide it by the total. Which of these, though? Right, the original, 1285. You always go to the original. And then we're going to go 129. We're going to divide it by 1285. We're going to get ourselves a decimal value. Ooh, look at this decimal. We got 0 0.100, 0 0.100, and it says to the nearest tenth. 
So we're going to stop at the 10th spot. Now I'm going to write the three that comes after because look what happens. I'm going to go, this is our decimal, turn it to a percent. We're going to go bounce and bounce. It's going to become 10.0 or 10.1. 10.0 because that's a three, it's too small. So it's going to be 10.0 percent. You have to show that 10th value. If you just write 10 percent, you're going to lose half a mark because it says round to the nearest 10th. You have to show that place value right here. So this would be wrong and this would be right. It's a 10 percent what? Yes, decrease. Here we have a Hugo Boss watch and a calculator. That's always good. And we have a question that states the Boss watch, this Boss watch, had an original price of $580. If the price decreased by 20% and then another 20%, so that must be 40%, right, Mr. Melham? 40 per, 20 and 20 is 40%, right? No, -uh. you're going to see in a minute here that that's not the case. What was the percentage drop in price? What was the drop in price, the percentage drop? Round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so let's start this here. We have a start price of $580. So I'm going to write start, $580. My end price will be after I have a sale and then another sale. There's going to be two sales. So I'm going to do those two sales and then I will figure out what that end price is. Let's do the first sale. How much would 20% of that be? Let's find out. If it drops 20%, let's find out what 20% is. We're going to go 20% multiplied by $580 and 20% is decimal 2 times 580 so you could put that in here 0 0.2 multiplied by 580 you are going to get $116 $116 that is what that's the sale price right no that's the drop. The price decreased by $116. You have to subtract now 580 minus 116. You subtract them, and you know what you're going to get then? You're going to get 580 minus 116. You're going to get $464. That's the sale price. But that's the first sale. So this is the first sale. First sale. But we have another sale. We have another 20%. So let's do that now. We're going to start with 464. Let's do the second sale in green. We have $464 and we are going to decrease it by 20%. So what is 20%? Well, well times by decimal 2. Okay, that's 20%. We're going to multiply it out. And then our answer is going to be Oh wait, we messed up here. Let's do it again. 464 multiplied by 0 0.2 and the answer is going to be $92.80. Put that zero after the eight. Make it like money always goes to the hundredth spot. So let's do $92.80. Decimal 80. Okay, that's the new price, right? No, it's not. This is the and then it decreased another 20%, which is what? $992. Here, let's do it in red here. $92.80. That's how much it fell. So we have to take the 464 and minus another 92.80. Put the dollar signs in. Let's do this. Let's see what it makes. We're going to go 464 minus 92.80. Okay, I've, I've missed a button. Let's go 464 minus 9, 2, decimal, 8, 0. And that makes $371. $371.20. Put that 0 after the 2. This, ladies and gentlemen, this here is our second sale price. So this is what the end price here will be. After two sales, we are going to get a final price of $371.20. Now how much of a discount is this? It starts at this much and it ends at this much. Is that a 40% drop? Let's find out. Remember what we did over here when we had a start and an end, a before and an after? Didn't we subtract them? Okay.
because we have to find out how much it drops. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go $580 minus $371.20. We're going to find out how much this price actually dropped by. It went $580 minus $371.20. The price dropped by $208.80. So we have $208 equals and 80 cents. That's how much the price fell. It started at this price and it ended at this price. So it went down that much. Turn that dollar amount into a percent. I don't know how, Mr. Malam. How do you do that? How do you turn a score on an exam into a percent? Don't you take your score? and then divided by the total number of questions. Well, here we have a total price, but which one do we use? Yes, the original, $580. Put it in your calculator, $208.80, and then we're gonna go divide by 580, and you're gonna get decimal 36. Look at that. 0 0.36 that makes 36 percent drop so these stores what they're doing when they tell you there's two sales one's a 20 percent one's a 20 percent why don't they just tell you hey we're just going to give you 36 percent off you know why because most people can't calculate this stuff properly most people don't know how to do math so what they try to do is separate the percentages so that you do wrong math in your head and you think the sale is bigger than what it really, what, what it really is. Really, it's a 36% sale. It started here and it ended there. That's only 36% off. But they're separating the price because most people in their minds will just say, oh, that's a 40% off sale. That's a great deal. Let's go to that place. <laughs> Here we've got Joe, has a 1,000, he has all this money in his bank. The next month he has this much money in his bank. What is the percentage gain in the value of his bank account? Well, if we start at this price, I, I like setting my work up like this. We're starting at 1550, decimal 25, and we are gonna subtract, or we end at 2,000. So clearly his, uh, he got richer. How much richer did he get? What's the percentage gain? How much is his regular gain, first of all? How much did he gain? Let's figure that out. Let's subtract these two. I'm just going to punch it in the calculator. Make sure you show your steps. I'm going to go minus 1550 decimal 25. I'm going to put that number here. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how much his money increased by. It went up. He gained. Turn it into a percent. Right. You're going to take it and divided by what? The original amount, which was, ah, uh -huh, yeah, 1550. Decimal 25. Now that's gonna become your percent. We are gonna go this number divided by 1550 decimal 25 equals this here. We're going to write equals 0 0.2901. Move the decimal twice, you're going to get what? 29%. Now, if the following month saw Joe gain another 3.2%, he gained another 3.2% in funds, how much money does Joe have now? Okay, that's not a bad problem. We just need to find out what 3.2% is. How much is this? Well, that's going to be 0 0.032 multiplied by what? How much he has, right? He gained. What did he start out at? How much did he start? He started at 2,000. Yeah, he started here and he went to there. Now this is our new starting point, two grand. We're going to take this and times it by a decimal 0 so we are going to go like this. We're going to go 0 0.032 multiplied by the 2,000 he now has, $64. This is $64. So ignore 3.2%. You're just going to say in your mind, this here is $64. We figured it out. So now the question says, if the following month saw Joe gain another $64, 
how much money does Joe have now? He has 64 now, right? Of course, right? No, no, he doesn't have 64. He gained 64. So that means we are going to plus 64 to 2,000. And that makes $2,064.